Hello and welcome to the second channel for Tales from the Trip. I'm your host, Trip Keeper, and on today's video, we are doing the third installment of Frightening Trip Reports to Fall Asleep to. You guys are loving this, and I'm liking doing it, because not a lot to edit, just put it together, upload it, and call it a day. Unlike my main channel videos, gotta really focus in, gotta edit like crazy, and uh, yeah, gotta make that pretty much perfect. But here, relax, you know, drink a beer, do whatever you gotta do. Not not saying I've never drank in a beer while recording main channel videos, but while doing this live, this is what we're talking about. Um, but yeah, this is volume three. Who knows how many volumes there are gonna be, but um, that rhymed. And uh, yeah, we're gonna be uploading these pretty frequently. I am going to be uploading these very frequently, not war because I'm the only one doing this. Um, but yeah, we're going to do videos in between, but I said we're again. I am going to do videos in between and uh, yeah, this is this is going to be a fun time, but so without further ado, let's just get started. This first video uh, first story is actually a follow-up to the last story I read on the other Frightening Trip Reports of Fall Asleep 2 Volume 2, where um, uh, the guy's friend tried to kill him on shrooms on Halloween. We got a follow-up here. Uh, this is from the attempted murderer's perspective. <laughs> it, this one's called, I got psychosis and almost killed my two best friends on Halloween while on shrooms. Already has 10 upvotes for my community. That's quite a lot. Um, so yeah, we're going to read it. It came out two days ago by um, Mirror's Game. Don't know. Uh, but yeah, this is probably the longest story we're going to read on today's video. Uh, the other ones are kind of, you know, sort of long, but not the other one. Writing Volume 2 has definitely had a bunch of longer stories, but um, that, that just took... I mean, I know you guys love the long videos. I like making them, but, you know, I got things else I got to do tonight. So, yeah, I'm just trying to, like, make it long while not making it, you know, just where I have to fucking read a lot, a lot. Because, yeah, I, need, I still need to do things. But, like, upload this and do other things, you know. So, let's get the start here. Let's upvote it. Um, all right. Five days ago, my best friend posted on our story of taking shrooms on Halloween. And I thought I should stop by and drop my side of the story. I'm glad you did. As you know, if you read his post, it was me and my two best friends, G and B. Me and G have a tradition of always doing something special for our friend B's birthday, which so happens to land on Halloween. We tend to just get fucked up and have fun, and we thought we should do shrooms together. Not a bad start. I mean, you know, what's that gonna hurt, you know? Now keep in mind that I've done shrooms about four times prior to this, and it was always around the same dosage, usually three and a half, but I'd done four once before, and everything went swell and I had a great time and learned a lot about myself. I usually kept a cool mind and used logic to control my emotions and push all the anxiety aside. Now into this story. We decided to all go down at my house. I have a very religious mother, but she respects my privacy and my room is a big and perfect location to trip and have fun. B has done shrooms once before, about 3.2 grams, and he enjoyed the experience and wanted to do more. Alright, uh, this is just a side note, fun fact, uh, not fun for me, but when I read stories, like reading like wanted to, needed to, like those are so hard to like try to read slowly, like especially with the sentence, like you could say it normally, like wanted to, but I wanted to do more. See, it's just like wanted to do more, but you got to also read other parts of the sentence that goes along with that. And yeah, I'm not saying don't put that in your story. You could put that in there. I'm just saying like when I'm reading, you know, wanted, needed, whatever. <laughs> it's just like, it comes out so fast. I gotta, I gotta reread those words like fucking five or six times to get it perfectly, but yeah. All right. Um, we, all had dis we all decided we'd do four grams each, given G had lots of experience and that I had done four before, no problem. This was a mistake, as I would come to find out these mushrooms were much more potent than any I'd taken before. Also, have a new video on my main channel about the Bromo Dragonfly. Shout out to the person that uploaded on the story on my Reddit. Uh, go watch that. We decided to crush the mushrooms up and enjoy them with a good old PB&J sandwich. After we'd eaten them, we start discussing what movie to watch, eventually landing on the movie Get Out. I knew watching a horror movie probably wasn't the best idea, but I thought given I've already seen this movie and know everything about it, I should be okay. We start the movie and everything's going amazing. About 30 minutes later, I start to feel extremely nauseous and can't stand the feeling of laying down, so I sit in a chair to continue watching the movie. 
20 minutes go by and I still feel sick, but I thought, the come up always sucks, and then it'll feel great. And eventually it went away, but then I felt extremely tired. I'd never felt tired while on shrooms, so I found it weird, but said, hey, best not to overthink and roll with it. Eventually, I found myself laying in my bed trying to fall asleep, but I couldn't because the movie was blaring through the TV and my friends were talking and laughing really loud. As I laid there trying to fall asleep, I was getting closed eye visuals for the first time. <clears throat> Excuse me. And not pretty ones. <laughs> Just like that burp. The audio soundtrack from the horror movie was distorting every visual I saw, turning them into blood and gore. I wanted to turn the movie off. See, there it happened again. I wanted to turn the movie off because I knew this wasn't right, but I saw my friends laughing and enjoying their time with the movie, and I couldn't bring myself to do it, so I tried to fall asleep again. Uh, you know, hey, I can't say I disagree with what you're saying here, man. I mean, you know, just gotta... Gotta, gotta let your friends have fun but you know if you are really struggling i would you know say something but yeah it's like hard when you got two friends that are enjoying themselves and you're just like oh fuck i can't really interrupt that so i see i see what you're saying here the visuals were driving me insane and all i could do was try to try to force my brain to think of something to calm me down i kept trying to force myself to think of my girlfriend's freight face and how happy she makes me so i could tap into that euphoric feeling but everything i tried would get distorted by the audio coming from the movie every scream and every soundtrack from the movie i was living it and seeing nothing but gore bodies completely mutilated and it's and etc i've actually i've never read a story where they actually put actually etc in it like <laughs> it's usually always etc i mean i've seen it work before but that was like what the fuck um but i've never actually read it in an actual story for my channel or anything so that's kind of cool but i pushed through it eventually the movie ended and i breathed the biggest sigh of relief finally i could enjoy my time with my friends but i was wrong my friend G always likes to go on walks when he's on shrooms and immediately said I'm going for a walk. B intended to join him. I did not I did not want to go on to a walk on a walk. I was still shaking from the visuals, so I told them to go on without me. I sat in my room thinking about what I just experienced and realized I needed to calm myself down, so I put on Lovely Day by Bill Withers. Beautiful song to listen to on shrooms, definitely recommend. Eventually, I felt at ease again and felt like I was in a really good mindset again, so I decided to join B and G outside. The walk to catch up to them felt extremely short, surprisingly, but I thought nothing of it. For the most part, when we were walking outside, everything felt great. It was just the usual laughing and having fun we always have, and I thought the worst was behind me. About an hour or two later, we decided to head to G's car to listen to some music and talk. B at this point is jumping from sentence to sentence and mumbling and mumbling, but apart from that, he seemed fine, just slower than usual, LMAO. This is when it all took a turn. As we sat in the car, I felt extremely fuzzy all over my body, and trying to move felt like I was lifting boulders with each movement I made, so I just tried my best to enjoy the music. It's at this point I started to feel like I was getting stuck in a loop. Every time I would look at G, he would look at me, so I would look away. Then I would look at him again to test if, it, if I was still in a loop, and once again he would look at me. All the meanwhile, this cycle keeps happening. Our friend B is in the back seat mumbling, doing his best to form a sentence. It was at this point my visual spiked to an extreme. I started hallucinating sharp and rigid geometric shapes intertwining in a beautiful dance, and I felt as if I had broken out of a simulation. That this is the true world, the real me, and that me and everyone on earth are the same person. Every person is a different version of me, living their complete separate life, but deep down, they are me, and I am them. This whole scenario messed with my head, oh, completely messed with my head. Uh, I thought I was going to be stuck there forever, but eventually we get out of the car. We head to the back of my house to just talk. Soon after this, I would start to black in and out almost like I was on autopilot. The last thing I remembered was stumbling on a branch and grabbing onto Bias to not hit the floor after that I, at, oh, sorry, floor. After that, I was gone. Beer break. I was suddenly by my front door and could see B and G discu discussing how to get inside without being loud. I, in my state of non-conscious, 
non-conscious, decided to just go in and leave them outside. Suddenly, we were all in my room trying to find a show or game to play, and I remember stumbling all over the place. Every inch of my body felt extremely heavy, and so I was dragging myself on the floor trying to find a stable position to sit in. After this, I got extremely loud according to, according to G. He kept trying to tell me to calm down and keep my voice down. At this point, I felt like I was two different people, sober and logical me, and whatever I was, and whatever I was while tripping. Every time G would tell me to calm down, sober and logical me would try to tell him that my mom doesn't mind if we're loud, and that I won't get kicked out, and everything was gonna be fine. But given, but given my state, but given, given my state every time I would try to explain this, it would come out as aggressive, and like I was trying to fight them. I had, no control of, I had no control of what was coming out of my mouth. Eventually, I blacked out and was suddenly banging on G's car. I was so confused by this that I thought I had fallen asleep during the movie, and everything I was experiencing was a dream. I was a passenger in my own body. I kept speaking to them in Spanish because once again I thought they were me and I was them, so surely they'd understand Spanish. Once again, I black out and find, and find myself trying to catch up to G walking down the road. Eventually, I catch up to him, and he turns to me and asks me, Hey, do you like video games? I said, Yeah, I like Spider-Man. So he convinces me to head home and boot up Spider-Man so we can play. And as I'm walking back home, I start tearing up. And not like a sad tearing up, but one of an anger-like. But one of anger-like. Or, but one of anger. Like the tearing up you do after your mom yelled at you as a kid, and you start crying from it. I don't understand why I felt this way, who or what I was angry at, and I kept repeating, leave me then, just like everybody else, see if I care. This confused me, but soon, I blacked out again. Blacking out, blacking out, every time, every time, bitch, blacking out, ooh. I was suddenly back inside my house asking my grandma and mom for forgiveness, asking them why they wouldn't talk to me. Thankfully, they are very heavy sleepers and I had no idea I was there. Eventually, I walked towards a living room where our newborn puppies were sleeping, and I just stared at them for a solid 10 minutes. Then I blacked out. You've been blacking out every paragraph. <laughs> when I came back to, I was laying in my bed half asleep, having major audio and visual hallucinations. I kept hearing the voice of G yelling, watch out, and seeing myself driving his car recklessly on the freeway, heading for a collision with a truck. Then I heard sirens and cops yelling at me to get down. I was still in bed and in my room, so I assumed I was trapped in my room mentally, but my body was out causing havoc. I then heard a cop telling me to put down the gun, and boom, I felt a gunshot in my stomach, then my hand, next my neck and mouth, and finally my heart. I thought this was it. I went crazy and died. I was going to be the next crazy loser on the news and that I'd ruin everything, not for myself, but, mer but for my family, and more importantly, my girlfriend. I felt myself bleeding out, and then like the snap of a finger, I woke up in my dark room at 4am alone, sweaty and in pain because apparently I'd been barefoot the whole time I was outside and didn't realize. I took this as confirmation that it was all a dream and that I fell asleep during the movie, but this isn't the end. I realized G and B were gone, which was strange since they were supposed to stay the night, and then it hit me like a truck. It was real, it was all real, and in a flash all those snippets of small memories started flooding my head. I thought I'd kill my, killed my best friends, my girlfriend, and my family. Oh god. I'd gone completely insane and killed the puppies and went on a rampage, and this was hell, endlessly stuck in my room forever with no way out, but then I started hearing voices and sirens. My mother calling my name behind my bedroom door pleading with me to come out and surrender, not to make this any worse. I started panicking thinking I'd killed my friends, and I was shot in the neck, and the cops had the house surrounded, and that this was it. My life had led up to killing my best friends and either going to prison for the rest of my life or letting myself bleed out from the gunshot wound I had in my neck. I spent 30 minutes screaming and pleading with the cops to understand that I thought it, that I thought it was a dream, that this wasn't on purpose, going between thinking I was dying or about to serve life. Suddenly, it all stopped. The visuals, the audio hallucinations, the panicking, just silence. I had sobered up in an instant and walked out my room and realized it was all a bad trip. 
Everything was okay, and more importantly, everybody was okay. I texted B and G to make sure they were okay and fell asleep. This whole trip changed everything in my life. More importantly, made me realize how bad my mental state was and that I need to take better care of myself. This could have turned out much worse, but thankfully everything was okay in the end and I'm forever thankful for whatever was watching over me that night. I vowed to never do shrooms again and I haven't looked back since. I still have nightmares from that night, but it's gotten way better and I'm happier than ever. I hope everyone uses this as a reminder to trip responsibly, and more importantly, don't trip if you're suffering from depression or are in any kind of bad mental state. Mental state. Stay safe out there and love y'all. After all, you guys are me. He he. Kissy emoji. <laughs> Oh, that was yeah, that was a good story. I liked that one. Um, I'm glad we had a follow up to it. That was actually really cool. I love follow up stories. Um, let me know in the comment section if you guys want me to put the two stories together. You know, first and uh, or before and after. Well, I guess it's not before and after, but just two different perspectives. I could maybe upload it to Spotify or something, and uh, or the second channel here, or maybe even the first channel. But I, I interrupted too much in the beginning, so if I put that on the main channel, no one's gonna want to like. They'll be like, what the fuck? But here, you know. A couple people care, but really, if you're on this channel, then you really shouldn't care. If you're, if you do care too much, then why are you even here right now? Uh, but give me one second. I got a, um, the absolute horror of Bromon Dragonfly uploaded, or whatever the fuck I called it, the unbridled terror. Um, so with my Spotify's, I think if it's if the audio is 13 minutes or less, I'm going to not have ads in between. Um, I'm just going to do the beginning and after, um, but with longer videos, yeah, I'll have them in the middle. They usually have the AI do it and they pick the time slot, so I don't pick them usually only for a select few. Um, but yeah, the only reason I'm having ads in, I, I know probably some people are mad at it, but I really don't care at this point. Uh, because my main channel got demonetized. I Even though I, I got terminated, got my channel back, it's still demonetized. Um, and I can reapply it back in May. So hopefully I can do that. And my taxes were fucking insane this year. I had to go to a credit union because it's just fucking that crazy. I mean, they're charging me so much money. Last year, I was able to pay for it just fine. Um, if I had that same bill, it'd be okay. But you don't even want to know how much it was. It, it was seriously bad. Um, but yeah. If you ever have a YouTube channel, you go monetized, just pray to God you won't get terminated because that's just like the worst thing that can happen. Um, but I didn't know I was going to get terminated. I woke up in the middle of the night or woke up at 5 a.m. and I got fucking 100 messages from people and my channel was gone. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to have to keep this monetized um, and we're going to keep it going. So um, yeah. And, but on the bright side of it, you get to see every video, every story on Spotify. Before, it was just the best stories and my second channel content, but now it's everything. So that's an upside to it. But um, what did I think about this story? I thought it was pretty good. I like the, I mean, I like the story. Like I said with the last video, I mean, I, I, I like it, but that doesn't mean I, I thought it was, um, you know, a good trip to have. You know, it's definitely a bad trip, but I like the story. That's what I mean by it. I, I like to get that that follow up. Um, so yeah, and it was nice and long. So yeah, that's that'd be a perfect video to do for Spotify or something. But if you guys don't want that, I'm not gonna do it. Um, did I upvote that? Yes, I did. I got 11 upvotes now. All right, this next one is a Xanax one. Yay! Uh, <laughs> just did a benzo video recently, the Phenazepam. Oh, excuse me. Um, this one is by Malibu System. 15 hours ago. Shout out 15 hours. Uh, I almost died driving blacked out on Xanax. Upvote it, six upvotes. Yeah, you do not want to drive on Xanax. That's like the worst thing to drive on. Unless you combine fentanyl and methamphetamine, then that's worse. But <laughs> it's just a straight pill. This is not a good one. I was 18 and working at a small boutique hotel. The reception is from 3 to 11 p.m. Before work one day, I popped one of those large Xanax bars. Taking it was really the last thing Taking it was really the last thing I remembered. Blacked out, I drove to work and clocked into my shift. I only know this because my boss texts me. Please text me when you get home. Feel better. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, that's, that's scary. 
I must have pulled some amazing lie out of my ass to not get fired immediately on the spot for showing up to work inebriated. I was definitely not speaking normally or moving in a sober fashion. I did Xanax in school a couple times, do not recommend it at all. I just don't recommend Xanax in the first place, like in general, like do not do Xanax. Uh, how many minutes are we into this? Okay, 20 minutes. Um, all right. Okay, wait, this is sober fashion. I ended up driving home, or at least trying to. I do have a small glimpse of a memory of me pulling over to the side of the road and parking because my car wasn't working. Turns out I ended up driving to the median, aka the, slope, AKA the sloped grass between the highways, and my poor 2011 Jeep Liter Liberty got all messed up. I suppose I knocked out as soon as I got pulled over. As soon as I pulled over, not got pulled over. A cop ended up pulling me over, okay, and checking on me and saw me slumped. Yo, man, you slump and sleep. Thankfully, he did not arrest me. I assume he woke me up and told me to call my dad. The only evidence I had of this was a picture that I sent to my father of where I was, and the only text I provided was, I am here. No explanation, no request for help, nothing. Maybe I called him, maybe the cop called him, I'm really not sure. My sister and mom ended up my sister and m my mom ended up picking me up and driving me to the hospital. The only thing I remember is waking up on a hospital bed in an orange gown surrounded by other tweakers. In the days, I walk up to a desk and slur, Where's my phone? And that was like a mix of, Wait, where's, the, where's my phone? Wait, who is that? That's that droopy beagle guy, or bloodhound. Um, which one is that? I, I forgot, it was that cartoon. Then they make me take a drug test, and maybe my mom had my phone because I just straight up left after getting changed. Hell, I still had the IV in my arm by the time I got home. I thought I recalled pulling the IV out myself, but my sister told me she was actually the one to pull it out and showed me a video. So crazy how substances can affect memory like that. I know I could have seriously injured or killed myself or others. I praise the Lord every day I did not. I never, ever put myself in a situation like that again. This was two years ago. I don't know how I did not get fired. I don't know what I told that cop so I didn't get arrested. But hell, I know I'm the luckiest unlucky person out there. It most likely has something to do with my white privilege and the fact that I'm a young pretty girl. So if anyone says white privilege isn't real, they are absolutely lying. It definitely is real. Yeah, I don't know why people don't think it is. I mean, it's just, yeah. In hindsight, my boss really should not have let me drive home in that state, but like I said, I was a huge liar back then, and maybe, maybe even in my inebriated state was able to convince him I was fine. Please, 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 do not do any substance and drive. It may end up costing you your life. Well, you said you're a pretty girl, so maybe your boss had a crush on you or something. That's probably what it was, and let you do anything. That That's the privilege of women. You know, if you're very pretty, Hey, you could talk out of any situation as long as you'd be cute with it. You know? <laughs> if someone said that to me, a cute girl like that said that to me, go home. I don't give a fuck. You know, no, I'm just kidding. But uh, yeah, do not drive on Xanax. I'm glad you're okay. I mean, this is definitely something you shouldn't do. Um, if you're prescribed Xanax and you're really not familiar with it, definitely do not drive on it because uh, I know some people, there's people out there who don't know what Xanax is and when they take it, they're like, bleh. And uh, yeah, they they come in for a surprise. So just know what you're taking um, and just be careful. But yeah, that was almost died driving Black Dot and Xanax. Now 16 hours ago. Oh boy, it changed in the middle while reading it. All right. We have another DXM story. We, we've been having DXM, DXM stories a lot. Uh, there's so many on my subreddit. It's DXM, LSD, and weed. Those are literally mo take makes up like 80 percent of my my reddit community um all right this one i upvoted the last one right okay yes i did forgetful let's upvote this has four upvotes now posted by do alfalfa six nine six eight nine six dxm caused me intense depersonalization and derealization that still lingers dxm ruined this man's life this is my first time ever creating a post on Reddit, so I'm very sorry if there's any typos or misspellings within my story. I am currently 20 years old at the time of recounting this story, and this story takes place when I was 16 in 2019. 16's the ripe age to take DXM. I was doing it 15, 16 years old, like, all the time. Yeah, fucking insanity. 
I have always been fascinated with drugs, and all drugs, how something on the surface could appear so ins insignificant while outside the body can cause intense reactions, for better or worse, while within the body, and in my case, it was the latter. Growing up, my house was very chaotic, thanks to my parents arguing nearly every day over my dad's alcoholism. Definitely not a good childhood to grow up in. I'm sure some of you hearing or listening to this who grew up in a similar situation may have de developed depersonalization disorder. If you know what I'm talking about and have, experiences ep and have experienced episodes of it, I'm very sorry you have or are dealing with that. I wouldn't wish it upon anyone. For anyone who doesn't know what depersonalization disorder is, the best way to describe it is that you feel like you're... is that... It is that you feel like your surroundings, body and mind are not real, or that you are in a movie. You'll find yourself desperately trying to reconnect with the world again, yet nothing helps. And you are trapped within your head with existential thoughts spearing through your brain every second. Now for when I made one of my most regrettable mistakes of my life, well, I should have read that differently. Now for when I made one of my most regrettable mistakes of my life. Wait, should I do that one more time in a real trip keeper voice? Now, for when I made one of my most regrettable mistakes of my life. Yeah, that, I can do that so, so perfectly now. Should I read it the rest of the way like that? No, that, that's my main channel voice. This is, this is the, you know, the calm, the fuck you kind of voice. It was November of 2019. My 16-year-old self at the time was a very lonely and depressed kid. I felt there was no point to anything, like I wasn't supposed to be here, like I was actually in hell being tortured. With these thoughts and emotions, I would cope with smoking weed, vapes, and cigs, and the occasional drinking sesh, but it wasn't enough for me. It's never enough. I wanted to fall out of this world and experience something other than this place of despair and loneliness. So I looked online for easy and cheap ways to hopefully catch a glimpse of happiness, or just something to make this life more interesting. I eventually came upon DXM and saw it was in cough medicine. So one night when everyone in my house was asleep, I went downstairs to the couch medicine cabinet and searched for anything containing DXM. Oh. Excuse me. I eventually found cough medicine pills. I grabbed a couple and went back upstairs to my room. Once in my room, I took the pills and started listening to music, since I heard the effects from DXM enhances music, which made me excited. But the excitement would soon turn into a living nightmare. Or should we read that in Trip Keeper? The, the, when, when it changes like that, I guess I'll, I'll read in that voice. But the excitement would soon turn to a living nightmare. Oh yeah, DXM definitely does enhance music. That's the best part about it. I remember starting to drift off to sleep while laying in my bed, only thinking the pills were just making me tired, but I was horribly wrong. I snapped awake within my bed a few hours later, feeling the most intense depersonalization I have ever felt. Everything in my room looked as if it was further away than it actually was. I got up and felt intense anxiety when it felt like my feet and hands were like balloons and being weighed down with the weight of the world. Whenever I hear Comfortably Numb by Pink Floyd, I can relate to the lyrics now, but I was definitely not comfortable. I ran to the bathroom right beside my room and sat on the toilet feeling like I was going to die on that spot and leave my worthless corpse for my family to find, like that Elvis story. I'm sorry for the crude humor, I just like relating things to other things. Eventually I left the bathroom and went back into my room and looked at my room mirror. I saw that my pupils were the biggest they have ever been. I almost did not have irises anymore. Seeing this scared me beyond belief and I knew I fucked up and I would suffer for this. Sitting back on my bed, I tried to calm down by watching YouTube and by listening to music, though, though, though helping soothe my anxiety ever so slightly. It was like putting a band-aid on a third degree burn, and in the back of my mind, I knew things were not okay. Eventually, I was able to go to sleep again and was hoping it would all be gone when I awoke. I was wrong. It felt, I felt the same anxiety and depersonalization that I felt earlier that night into the morning and the next and the next. And still to this day, I believe this experience has cemented depersonalization in my mind and I constantly feel as if I am not real and the world around me is, in, is a dream. I don't think I'll ever get out of this. Be careful with what you take, especially if you grow up in a traumatic environment. 
It could cause lasting effects you wouldn't wish upon anyone. All right, yeah, definitely a good um, a good bit of advice is just if you have problems like that, like depersonalization, derealization, yeah, you got to be careful. Like, I'm not saying you can't do it, but just be careful with it more because, um, you know, plus if you don't have it, drugs can cause it, you know, it's just, so you just got to really be careful with what you do to watch your dosage. I mean, sometimes dosage doesn't even matter. You could take a little bit and something will happen, but usually that's not the case it's just like in rare cases but not saying it can't happen um but yeah you just got to be careful because drugs can really ruin your life sometimes you just got to be careful with what you're doing like the safest route to go is just not doing them at all that's just what it is but if you want to have some fun from time to time you know take shrooms i don't give a fuck um well i do give a fuck i don't give a fuck all right don't give a fuck that's one of my favorite lines from the sopranos um but yeah, best thing to do is just not to take it. But if you are going to do something, do something that's known to be safe. You know, stuff like DXM, DPH. Now, DXM is definitely not as bad as DPH, but I'm not saying it's safe. It's just they're they're both drugs you should not take. But if you are going to take DXM, you know, spread it out. Don't do not do a whole bunch. Um, people want to reach the fifth plateau, which is insanity. If I took that much, I would want to throw up. I Just taking a little bit makes me want to throw up. And I feel I can't even eat the rest of the day because my like, I just feel nauseous. But like, not to the point where I'm like, it, it's bothering me like crazy. Like I have a stomach ache. I just feel it, if that makes sense. It's just like a feeling of nausea. All right. Um, all right, so thank you for that story, do alpha alpha uh, 6896. All right, this one was uploaded a day ago. Most of these stories I'm going to read are probably going to be from the previous day, but I'm also going to find some from, you know, before like cuz I got to get back down. There's a bunch of stories from when I first made this that I haven't read, so I'm, maybe I'll do that uh, next time. There's a fentanyl story I really wanted to read and I totally forgot about it when I made the last fentanyl video, so I'll probably read that next time. Uh, it's very long, so yeah. Or should I save it? Let me know if I should save it for another fentanyl video in the future or should I read it on here? Just let me know. All right, this next one is uh, called HHCP Headache Hell. Uh, this is posted by Zlodzika Paniova. Um, I did not pronounce that right, but that's okay. This is just usernames and it doesn't matter. Upvote that. At the beginning of this post, I would like to provide some context. I live in middle Europe, quite close to Germany, where up to a few grams of weed is decriminalized, but still not yet completely legalized. Usually it's easy, easy to get some fine weed in my area. There are plenty of local growers, but when the spring hits, most of the dealers are out of weed and it's quite hard to get some, get some stuff, get some staff. When these times come, when these times come, you have two options. One, just wait until summer and contact local growers. Two, try Telegram. This option sucks 99% of the time. Telegram is just with, with spammers and uh, fucking scammers. It, there's, why, don't use Telegram. Buy HHC, HHC, HHCP, or THCJD. You see, <laughs> these products are just unregulated substitute because normal weed is not legal. I didn't know Germany wasn't uh, legal. I thought it was, but I guess, yeah, I guess not. Ohio got legalized before Germany. The fuck Germany, come on. So to my story, this happened, or what, wherever, uh, quite close to Germany, so maybe there, it's, I don't know. I don't know the laws in Germany, wherever their country is from. Um, but yeah, so excuse me if I, if I said that. So to my story, this happened shortly after I wrote my entrance examination on university I want to study, and I also part, I also put, took some last tests at my, I also took some last tests, tests at my grammar school. Basically, I have one month free time before my or, oral graduation exams. I wanted to enjoy, I wanted to enjoy my little free time by being high on pot all day and doing nothing. I was desperately trying to get some good weed at my local town friends slash dealers, but was very unsuccessful, resulting in me going to local weed shop with HHCP. I tried normal HHC before. It was an okay high, but nothing like classical weed high. More chemical, let's say. So I said to myself, I tried HHC, so HHCP will surely be okay. Oh boy. 
I bought one gram of the HHCP Gorilla Glue Weed from a quite big weed shop in the center of my city. I went on my favorite spot. I grinded the weed and mixed it with a little bit of CBD from the same shop. CBD products are actually good at this store. Rolled a joint and smoked it in the afternoon. Shitty HHC products tend to taste very chemical when smoked, but this joint wasn't so bad at all. TBH says tastes really good for being HHCP, I said. At the beginning, it was a pleasant high, when you are a stoner. That this is that kind of high you get from a really strong, from really strong, expensive weed. I was able to spend time with, I was able to spend time with my, and enjoy it a hundred times better, my what? <laughs> um, around 6 p.m. that day, I started doing what I liked the most on weed lying in bed and watching YouTube or Netflix. I often like to vape because nicotine, being stimulant, increases my high to interesting levels. This time, something wasn't right. I started vaping, but after a few moments, I started having a terrible headache. I sometimes suffer from migraines, and it was that kind of pain. I stopped vaping, closed my eyes, focused on my breath, and pain went away. I decided not to smoke since it caused me pain. Around midnight, I went, to, I went to the living room to tell my parents I'm going to sleep. Before I actually went to bed, I needed to finish up one more quest in AC4 Black Flag. Suddenly, a wave of atrocious headache hits me like a train. After that, I immediately went to bed. I closed my eyes and started praying that the pain would soon go away, but it didn't. It was just more and more intense. I was so confused. Because I am very... Because I'm a very cautious person about getting three to four liters of liquid a day and was suffering a headache like I ran 20 kilometers without a single sip of water. Okay, uh, yeah, th I'm just letting everyone know this is kind of like, you can tell it's like English translated, so I'm trying to be my best on the spot to like translate it good, but yeah, some of it's just not coming out right, but uh, you guys get the point. Please, I just want to faint. Please help me. Oh my God, what's happening? I was on the edge of crying how strong the pain was, but couldn't make that much sound, so my parents wouldn't notice. Pure nightmare. I tried to stand up to get some water because my mouth was desert dry, but fell, but fell hard on the ground and lied there with no power. I thought this was the end. I was lying in the dark, alone in my room with no one to help me. While I was lying on the ground approximately a few minutes, my headache got a little better after some time, and I lied on my pillow in my bed. For a few seconds, it was fine. Got a scammer call on me, go fuck yourself. But after that few seconds, the headache came back with full and greater power than before. The cycle of pain has begun. The process described before repeating way, way more times, more than, ten, more than 10 times for sure. One, I was in terrible pain. Two, tried to get up. Three, lied in pain on the ground. Four, it got better. Five, I got some water. Six, and again, I lied on my pillow in my bed. Uh, this cycle repeated so many times, I felt ashamed to discuss it with myself. What if my mother or father found me in my room like this, lying on the ground with no power, in pain, under the influence? That idea made me so disgusted and paranoid. The thing I don't understand about HHCP is that this incident happened many hours after smoking the infused weed. Yeah, that is kind of strange. Finally, the headache went away partially around 1.20 a.m. I was so drained, dead, out of energy. I just closed my eyes and was happy I made it through. More than happy, I was thankful I survived this hell. And when I mean hell, this was the worst headache in my entire life. This was that kind of pain that makes adult males sob that they are going to die in pain. Makes the adult male sob, sob that they are going to die in pain. Okay, yeah. Second day, I woke up pretty late despite having to be at school at some last useless lessons. I called to the school office that I had a terrible migraine during last night and I am so sleepy, so I will stay home. I also wrote that to my father. My dad understands my physical and mental issues. He is understanding when I stay at home and when I'm feeling sick, depressed, or anxious. Oh. Excuse me. During that day, I felt totally numb and stayed the whole day in bed eating cereal. I was mentally and physically recovering from the pain. I survived. I felt like I survived some medieval torture. 
By this post, I want to show why not legalizing normal weed is complete bullshit. If normal cannabis was legal and not these substitute substances that are not approved by the government, nothing what I wrote, nothing what nothing I wrote wouldn't have happened. This was the last time I have ever touched HHCP, HHCP or THC derivatives in my life. I will just stick to normal classic weed. I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. By the way, sorry if there are mistakes in this post, as I am not an Engli native English speaker. You are right, dude. That's fine. Um, yeah, no, we, we got we got the point. Uh, that's all that matters. You get the point across. Um, but you did format it perfectly. I love the way you format it. So don't even don't even worry about it. Um, but yeah, I've never done HHCP, and I fucking hated reading that because it's like I HHCP. That's like those are letters you do not want to say together. It's just it's hard to say um, when you're trying to read fast. Um, not fast, but you know at a good good speed. Um, what are we at now? We're at 40 minutes. All right. I at least want to reach 40 minutes on all these videos, but you've got two more stories. I chose six stories for today. Um, but yeah, I think wherever this person was living, whether it's in Germany or outside of Germany, they definitely need to legalize it. Europe, I'm surprised that anything in there is not legalized. It's just so different from here. Like here, there's a stigma around weed that it's like for, you know, people who are drug addicts and stuff with like boomers and shit. But you know, those people, some of them are starting to come around, but the old people definitely still think it's the devil, devil plant because of what they were taught. Not going to say I can't blame them because when you grow up and you're, you're spoon fed something like that, then you're going to believe it for the rest of your life. You know, it's just how it goes. So, you know, but that's why I try to be open minded with most things, you know, what with everything. I mean, I'm not, you know, there's so many things in this earth that people fight over. And especially the worst part is politics. Like, just put aside your differences. If your person you want in your party is doing something stupid, call it out. Don't support everything they do. You don't have to do that. Like, just be like, all right, he made a mistake or she made a mistake, but we're going to move on with it. It was a terrible choice, but yeah, just don't be like, oh, they did this. Uh, this is the greatest thing ever. It's like, don't lie to yourself. But yeah, I just, I like people who are open-minded. Those are the best people to talk to. All right, this one is a wall of text. Uh, so if you upload another one, stranger only two four five five, just make sure it's formatted correctly. Uh, with this, it's fine because uh, we're just you know going going off the cuff here. But yeah, this is by stranger only two four five five. This is MDMA overdose leading to psychosis. Um, another psychosis one and I've noticed that a lot of these stories you do not wish them upon your worst enemy so I'm betting that that's what this says at the end uh, we'll see maybe not I don't know but yeah let's uh, let's read this story Ooh, a software updates available I'm gonna do that right now while I'm fucking reading these so I don't have to do it later all right update now iOS 17.4.1 all right all right, let's let's do this shit. Oh, okay. This all occurred about a week ago on a day I had off from work. Trying to write this soon before I forget too much. I just got about uh, three quarters of a gram of pure MDMA rock, rock capped up into 250 milligrams each capsule. And I decided I wanted to roll that night. Um... I didn't plan to roll alone that night, but my friend wasn't answering, so I decided to just go for it. I wanted a harder roll, so I busted open two of the capsules and put to what I assumed to be about 0.3 of M into one capsule and put the rest of the molly I had into one capsule. This will be important for later. And down the hatch it went. Around 11 p.m. it hit me like a fucking train, and I was rolling hard as fuck, intense visuals more than I've ever experienced before. The roll was going pretty good and I definitely should have stopped there. I have no idea why, but in my state, I decided to redose no more than 75 minutes after the first dose. Almost fatal mistake on my end, bringing my total dose to about 0 .700, 0 .7, 0 0 0.75 milligrams of pure MDMA. The zero threw me off there. I don't know why. About 20 minutes later, I started to get insanely hot and sweating, and sweating bad. I was OTP with my friend, and he on the phone. <laughs> I was on the phone with my on the phone with my friend, and he asked if I was okay and that I didn't look too good. Um, I was com 
At this, at this point, I was completely drenched in sweat. It looked like I had just come out of the shower. Hypothermia was definitely starting then, but I somehow didn't realize. My hands were turning so fucking red, it looked like someone had poured boiling water on them. At that point, I ended the call with my friend and decided to t go take a cold shower. This didn't help that much and was, and was out in five minutes to go drink some water. It's about 1 a.m. And, and I was deciding whether or not to take a Xanax and go to bed. I was overheating again in my bed, so I went out and sat outside on the porch where it was almost freezing out. This helped tremendously and probably is one of the reason, reasons I am alive right now. After about an hour or two on the porch, I started to notice lights and voices out in the distance. I live on a relatively big property, so I chalked it up to being my neighbors doing some shit. I went back inside and started getting ready to drop a Xan and go to bed. The voices were starting to sound right outside my window, so I look out there and see four people in masks talking about how easy it would be to break and pop the motherfuckers inside. I started to panic and went outside with my 9mm. 9mm. I'm legally not allowed to own. I'm 17 and living with a very strict dad. And got up to my window and heard them around the corner saying he's right there and to wait. I didn't think it was a good idea to turn the corner and face four people, so I went back in and decided to check my dad's cameras to verify what I was seeing. I seen them at the corner of the property appearing to be dragging a dead body. I should have known then that it wasn't real because there were... Because there... They... There were in a completely different spot than before. They were in a completely different spot than before. At that point, I called the police and woke up my dad. When they showed up, they determined nobody was there. And when I showed the camera foot footage, they said it was just a plant. Oh my god. Oh my god. That's embarrassing. That is really embarrassing. Imagine that. Imagine saying you, you think there's some fucking hoodlums outside. And they said it was just a plant. Oh, brother. The police asked me if I was on any prescription medication because of the size of my pupils. My dad knew I was on something after that and decided to drug test me right after they left. I wasn't worried because I had been cheating my dad's drug test for months months now. I made another mistake that could have ended my life. I started chugging water to make myself piss for his test because I wanted to convince him I was clean. You're not supposed to drink a large amount of water at, at once on MDMA. This can lead to death. Oh. I got it down. I got it down, pissed and cheated his test, and he went to bed. I had already started feeling intense tightness in my chest, and it felt like I was about to have a heart attack and die. I promptly woke my dad up and told him the truth and what was happening. He quickly drove me to the hospital and administered something to me. I was already and Mr. administered something to me periods we need in this story. I was already unconscious at this point. I woke up several hours later and was fine. I will never dose this high ever again. I have learned my lesson. I still experience chest pains today. I hope I don't have any long lasting damage. Don't make the same mistake I did and keep your doses under a half a gram max. Uh, yeah, that's good advice at the end. You definitely don't want to do too much. Um, I understand though because um, Molly is a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> I will say it's a lot of fun, um, but definitely don't do it a lot. Spread it out. Um, I haven't done it in a couple years now, but I don't know how it would be now. But yeah, I always liked it. Um, all right, this next one has fourteen upvotes. Crazy. A month ago, sleepy six ikz underscore um, attempted caused drug induced psychosis and three to four uh, day long crime spree. Now, with the title of this story, it would be perfect for my main channel, but it is just too short for it. Um, so we're gonna read it here, and I don't want to pass up a good story, you know. Well, I don't know what it's gonna say, but we're we're gonna. You know, like I said, I skim through it, you know, see words that pop out to me, and hopefully it, it's a good story, but, um, yeah. All right, let's upvote this. 15 upvotes now. Before the story starts, let me state that you should never try research chemical benzos. They are far more dangerous than your average pharma benzo. Oftentimes, they are more dangerous just because the physical withdrawals are more potent than the withdrawal associated with pharma benzos. In general, just steer clear of benzos as, as it's often a recipe for disaster when used long term. 
RCs can oftentimes be bought off the dark web, and you can never be certain of the drug's legitimacy. For all you know, it could be fentanyl. While uncommon with research chemicals, it's never impossible. They may just change your life for the worse. I, 18 male, had attempted causing a drug-induced psychosis, which while in this state, I went on a drug-induced crime spree. I do not remember. It was a three to four day crime spree. I had taken a large amount of several medications in which I thought I would clarify, never try what I did. In which I thought I would clarify, never try what I did. Ozzy came up on the table. Don't get any stupid ideas. Suwa is never the answer. With that out of the way, here's a list of everything I took. Uh, flu, flu, I don't know if I got that right. I haven't actually read a story on that before, but hopefully it's pretty close. A designer drug, benzodiazepine, also known as Fanax. And another research chemical, benzodiazepine, similar to this one, listed above, to the ones listed above. All of these in either an ethanol or isopropyl alcohol solution. Hydroxazine, alcohol, alcohol, everything I'd taken with the intent to end my life. Now, I'm not sure if even the cops were aware of this, as I was only making noises that were in English, and screaming and maniacally laughing. I wasn't there at all. The cops were called to my house for three days. It was to the point they would just stay on the block because they knew they would be called back to deal with me. At some point in the hospital, I had been pissing on the nurses, in which again I have no recollection of. I was saying things that made no sense and talking in circles, but as a person experiencing this, it seemed as if I was asleep. From what I remember, it was like pure black, like not existing. I was unaware of the lack of existence, neither did I care as, as I was what seemed to me as dead. Aw, oh, as he's looking at me. But that was far from the truth. My body was committing crimes as if it was muscle memory. Yes, I take full responsibility of my actions as of the present, but it seemed as but it seemed as if I was doing this while my mind was completely on vacation. I assure you, I was never in any trouble before this incident. I was a good kid, and besides some things to do with my mental illness, I had never been in much trouble. I'm diagnosed bipolar one, and this has caused this has caused several super, super, super attempts in the past. Moral of the story, don't touch research chemicals and always test your drugs before ingesting or you may just mistake nurses as urinals. Did not expect it to end that way, but that was one of the greatest endings of all time with that sentence, wow. Nurses, urinals, uh, there's a couple of the same letters in there, so I could see why you'd mistake it. Um, Damn, this iOS update is not going anytime soon. Oh, shit. Um, yeah, do not do any research chemical benzos. He probably did clonazolam. Or no, he already said what he did. But um, yeah, no, it's if you ever see clonazolam, though, not clonazepam, but clonazolam, do not do that shit. That is the most dangerous shit you can ever do. Um, but yeah, research chemical benzos are very dangerous. Regular benzos are still pretty fucking dangerous. Uh, they're really dangerous, actually, especially with addiction and stuff, withdrawals. But man, research chemical ones, so potent, and it's just not worth it. You know, it's just, I don't know. Um, but yeah, those were some frightening trip reports to fall asleep to, uh, volume three. Uh, let me know what you guys thought of it in the comments. Uh, are you guys sleeping good from this? Is there enough content for you? Um, yeah, we're going to be uploading more and more. Frightening Trip Reports Volume 4 will probably come out by next week, maybe. Who knows? Oh, the solar eclipse is coming. I'll do a read a trip report while the moon is covering the sun. Just kidding. But um, yeah, no, I, ho I hope you guys had fun while listening to this. Probably 70, 80% of you are sleeping right now. But if you are awake, uh, I just want to say that I love you. And I want to give you a big kissy goodnight because it's time to go to your bed. You've been up for way too long. Yum. All right, fuck that shit. Uh, but no, bro. Um, all right, uh, it is April fifth, so this is crazy how fast this year is going. Every year goes faster and faster, and it's scary. And also, uh, keep my grandpa in your thoughts and prayers as he is suffering from congestive heart failure, and he was like my dad growing up. So if you just appreciate it, if you guys like, you know, would do something like that you know it would mean a lot um but yeah who knows how long he's gonna live for uh but hopefully whatever happens he's 
not in a lot of pain and it's just easy but um yeah all right uh don't want to hold you guys any longer this has been frightening trip reports to fall asleep to volume three